All right, I'm gonna be doing a review of the Microsoft Duo. And I wanted to do just a really short introduction video to say, stay to the end, because I'm gonna tell you my five things I like, my five things I hate about this phone, and the number one reason why it's going back, because I ain't keeping it. All right, so Microsoft Duo, and this has been my daily driver here for a few days. And, and let's talk about some of the things I love, some of the things I hate. Okay, let's talk about the things that I love. First of all, hardware wise, the feel of it, 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 it really does feel fantastic. One of the things that really surprised me was how good it felt to hold in different ways, right? So what do I mean by that? I mean that if I have a tablet, so I've got a tablet here, and if I'm walking around with this tablet, it's a it's a good sized tablet and you're going to tend to hold it like this or hold it like this and you're walking because you're scared that you're going to drop it. That's kind of how you get to hold it or you got to two hand that sucker, right? Because it just, you're just scared you're going to drop it. When you have this phone in your hand, you can, you know, hold it like this, but because it also, you know, has this bend to it, you end up, you know, holding it like this or like this. There's all these kind of different ways you end up holding it. And it feels really comfortable in your hand. So from a hardware perspective, I have to say, very impressed, really am impressed with, with this phone. I think it's a really neat form factor. Um, so just, that's the number one thing. That's one of the things I really love. That's the first thing I really love about this phone. The second thing that I really love about this phone is just the usability factor of it. Um, you know, I, I, I think everyone who's reviewed this phone has said, look, this isn't for everybody. Okay, everyone gets that, okay? And I'll state it as well, it's not for everybody. Um, that being said, if it's for anybody, it's for me. And the reason why, I work from home. I am at home all the time. And with COVID, we're all at home almost all the time. And so um, it has been something that I, I have used nonstop. Now I'm going to do um, one also about kind of the Android auto experience and using it in, in the car and using it on the go. So from that perspective, you, you'll get a little bit of that visual as well. But at home, it really is a good phone. I mean, you're, you're at home, you are, uh, you're on the couch, you've got both of these screens going and you're getting that productivity of, you can have your work email on one side and you can have um, you know, a, a YouTube video going on the other. You feel like you're being highly productive all the time. It's really fantastic. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to have a YouTube video going and I like to have Facebook up or Auto Trader up or things like that so that I could be doing some research and different things. So from a software perspective, fantastic from, from that piece. So that's the second thing that I really like about this phone. Um, the, the third thing that I really like about this phone is also software related, which is Microsoft Edge. I, I didn't really think I was gonna, I, I never use Microsoft Edge. I'm a Chrome guy, I always use Chrome. Why wouldn't you use Chrome in, in my book, right? Um, but I really do like Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge on this phone kind of balances between the two uh, between the two screens and you can actually move things from one side to the other. I'm not really good at it So I'm not going to focus on that a lot in this review um, But you can move things around and it is really really nice. So that's the third thing I like and I know that that's kind of software related um, And then the the fourth thing I really like about this is it is Android and now I know probably a lot of people that are on this are gonna go well Yeah, of course, it's Android. That's why we're here, but you know, I'm a technology person, so I'm an Android person and I'm an Apple person. I, I have devices of, of, of both sides. I'm not a fanboy of either. I think that they both have quality things that they can offer and bring to the table, and they both have terrible things that they need to work on. Um, you know, good for Apple that they're finally going to release widgets, right? That Android's had that since day one. Um, and, uh, you know, the problem with Android is there's just too many phones, um, within the ecosystem that they, they can't seem to stabilize a lot of things. And you tend to reboot from time to time to, to have to free up memory and whatever else to make sure that your system is running properly. And so you end up getting that a lot. And so 
it's, it's not always perfect, but Android runs really well on this. The launcher on it runs really well. So the launcher and Android integration is my number four. I think that's a really positive thing. I think it's fantastic. They did a good job of doing that. They did a good job of putting it together, placing it together. It has a nice integration set with any of your Microsoft stuff. So if you're a Microsoft user, you know, you've got your office right here. You have uh, one drive right here. Everything is good to go. If you're an Xbox person, you're going to really love this system because it's going to have a lot of integration points that perhaps you're not used to and you're going to really truly enjoy it now one of my favorite things about this and this is my number five of the positives is the cool factor I have owned a lot of phones I have wandered around places with a lot of phones I was one of the first people to whip out an iPhone 12 on people or iPhone 11 on people and then be like oh what is that very few people knew what that was when you pull this phone out in public, people flip out. People are like, what in the world is that? So from a cool factor, I got to tell you, this rates really high on the cool factor when it comes to that. Now, if that's something you're into and you like having people look at you like you're super cool or you got a lot of money or something like that, wandering around with this bad boy will get you some attention because there is a cool factor that goes along with this. Now, I don't know if that means anything to you, but that's pretty cool. Um, you know, walking around and, and having a phone that that people are like, what is that? And how does that work? And what in the world? And someone told me, they said, that's like an iPhone 20. That literally was a quote from someone the other day. So it's a really neat from that perspective. It has a huge cool factor to go along with it. All that being said, those are my five positives. Now let's get to some negatives. One of the worst things about this phone is the phone. And maybe that's the reason why Microsoft said, don't call this a phone. Because they knew that the experience of taking phone calls on this was going to tick you off. Because it's a terrible phone. It's a terrible phone for a few reasons, but let's talk about it. First of all, my phone is shut currently, and I get a phone call. Now, we all knew this was going to happen. I can't tell you who's calling me. I can't. I don't, I don't know who's calling. And this is probably where... You know, if you have an Android gear, you know, you've got something that's running gear, you've got an Android watch of some kind, you're going to be having a leg up over what I'm talking about right now. I can't tell you who's calling. If you've got a, an Android watch, you know who's calling. That, that's, a, that's a huge benefit. But I don't know who's calling me. If I open this phone all the way when I'm receiving a phone call, even if I don't really notice that someone's calling me, guess what? I'm now on the phone. Because it functions like an old school phone where you open the phone and it answers. Um, so what you have to do is you have to do uh, something that's called the peak posture, which is this number, right? I open it up just a little bit and you can see that the time is showing. Well, if somebody's calling, it'll tell me who is calling. And so you can open it just a little bit and see if you open it too much, it does give you a little bit of a chance before it makes you answer the phone. But it's a little bit annoying that I can't be sitting there having a conversation. My phone rings and I look over and see who's calling. Now, you can leave the phone open all the time, but that feels a little bit dangerous because you've just got screens on both sides and you feel like it may be damaged. And that may be a thing where cases, uh, you know, future uh, cases would, would really help with that. But my concern right now is that it just tends to be closed a lot. I get a text message, I get a phone call, and I just don't know who it's from. I really think Microsoft would have gone a lot better off if they would have created even a little tiny screen that would have stated what was coming along. Um, the number two thing that I don't like about this is, is something that I'm going to talk about when it comes to Android Auto is if you've seen on my phone, I have, I, I placed a little metal plate here um, so that I could stick it to a magic mount that I have in my car. And so I have this stuck to a magic mount on my car. Now here's something that, that I'm always curious about, and I had a really long test of this yesterday, is that with the phone plugged in and the screen on, and I'm charging, can it keep up from a charging perspective? And the answer to that is no, which is a major problem for a long trip. In other words, if my phone is on, my phone, both screens are on, and it's charging at the same time, it'll slowly die on you. 
because your phone can't charge fast enough with both string screens on. That's an issue. That really is an issue. And that's a huge issue for me because you know why? Because I have a magic mount. It sticks there magnetically. And I have a Corvette C7 and there is really no great way to have this mounted open. Um, you know, so I know that probably some of you have the, uh, um, the mounts where, you know, you can spring it open and set it in where only one screen is on. And if that's the case, you can get away with it, right? It'll charge from my testing one screen on plugged in. It'll slowly charge itself two screens on plugged in. My car would not charge it. So that's something that is concerning to me. If you turn the screens off, it'll, it'll charge it, but it, it can't power both screens and be charged at the same time. So something huge to be aware of if you're a magnet person, um, the experience of having both screens on while driving is really cool. And I'll get into that in another video. Um, but just be aware it, it can't keep up with it, which to me is a really, it's a big problem on a long trip. And I took a long trip yesterday uh, to Miami and it was a three hour drive one way. Uh, and six hours, I literally had to turn the screen off so that the phone could catch up for a while while I was driving. And I really don't like to do that. I wanted to see my podcast and I wanted to see things that were going on. So very frustrating to me. Um, the number three thing um, was back to the positives, um, but it's also a negative, which is the software. There's a lot of software on here that works fantastic, but at the same time, there's some software that's really glitchy. There's some software, if you're moving it from screen to screen, kind of gets stuck because it's not quite perfected yet. It's still a little buggy. So that's my third thing I don't like about this phone is the software, it sucks. Even though that was a positive, it's also a negative because some software is just not ready for prime time, even though it's on your phone. Not Microsoft's fault. This is the fault of third party applications that have not been updated yet. So I can't really blame that on Microsoft, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of applications that you may want to use that you're not able to use because as soon as you get on here, they're going to suck big time and they may get stuck in dual screen mode, but they're only on one screen. So they're like this small that's happened to me with a couple of applications in shot is one of them that's done that to me a couple of times and it's stuck on one side, but it's in dual screen mode. And I, and I can't even use it. Um, and when I say that duck and stuck in dual screen mode, it means there's a line on both sides, um, underneath it. It thinks it's trying to show on both screens, but it's only showing in one screen. It's really frustrating. Um, so that's my third thing that I really don't like about this phone. That's my third thing. I really don't like about, about this phone. Um, series, but it has a couple of crappy Microsoft accessories that no one wants to use. I have no interest really Microsoft in scanning forward on a PowerPoint in my ear. And I'm a nerd who enjoys PowerPoints, but come on, that's not something I'm interested in doing. It needs some cool accessories and, and, I, and off the top of my head, it needs a keyboard. Uh, I think that would really, really, really help and make this a really neat device. And I think that you could get away with having this a, a hard keyboard that went across the entire thing so that you could have some kind of a functionality with it functioning as a tablet with a keyboard folded over with it open. You don't want that anymore. Pop it off and you're done. Connect it to the USB-C. You would be good to go or have it Bluetooth. You'd be good to go and it would have its own cover and it almost function as a little, uh, you know, like kind of like a little mini uh, tablet. And then when you wanted to go back to phone mode, you could unplug it and be good to go. There's things like that that could make this function more and more and more between that space of a computer and a phone. And that's what this is trying to do. And it does a much better job. And this is the funny thing is when you, whenever when you get a hybrid, it doesn't do a good job at something. And this funny enough for the first time is doing a better job of being a computer than it is being a phone. Most of these do a really good job of being a phone and a really sucky job of being a computer. This one actually is a better job of being a, a tablet and better job. I think of function as a computer than it does it being a phone. And the number five thing I hate about this, and this is the reason this sucker is going back is the camera. Oh my God. I was so desperate to catch a, a shot of the camera the other day. You cannot get to the camera on this phone. Oh, you, you can, you open it up 
you unlock, you hit this, and you're you're in selfie mode immediately. That's that's this thing goes to selfie mode because that's where the camera's at. It's pointed at you. So you flip it down and sometimes it goes to the right spot and sometimes it doesn't. It seems like by the time and, and, and currently it's in the right spot, by the time you figure out how to use this camera, whatever moment you are trying to catch is long flipping gone. And it's so frustrating to me. It's so frustrating to me. Now I think potentially with a couple of changes, it would be much better. And I also think potentially with getting used to it a little bit more, it would be much better. But I will tell you something. I dare anyone to go drink three beers and try to figure that out. You will be in the corner in tears because it is just an impossible situation. So if you're a camera person, my complaint about this camera is not how it looks. My complaint about this camera is the functionality of it. It is getting to it to do it in the right thing. I was trying to take a picture of something and I literally almost took a selfie with me in the picture trying to catch the dog. But I, I missed an opportunity that I really wanted to capture. And so it was incredibly frustrating to me. And this is really honestly the reason why I will not be owning a Duo for very much longer. It's going back. It's going back because of the camera. And the second reason it's going back is because of the phone functionality. I need to be able to use my phone as a phone. And this is just not a good phone. And that is a little bit frustrating to me. It needs a screen on the outside and it needs the ability to have a better camera. They should have had two cameras. They should have had a screen on the outside. They should have had a camera on the outside so that you could quickly flip between selfie mode and regular camera mode. People use their phones for two big things consistently and that is for phone calls and to take pictures and frankly i use mine more for taking pictures than i do for phone calls and the fact that i couldn't figure out how to quickly take a picture on this was a little bit frustrating it's just not intuitive and i think again with a little bit of time you may figure out the tricks and how it would work but it needs to be more intuitive i hope you enjoyed that please like please subscribe please leave a comment and uh, let me know if you have any other questions before this sucker goes back, because it ain't going to be long, people. All right. Take care. Have a great day and stay safe.